Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, Nigeria's rising death profile is what we're looking at this morning. Are we ever going to come out of this? <laughs> Especially when you have it at nine to seven point, according to the latest yeah, at report, some point one trillion naira. Mm. The figure you have is even as at December. That's the current figure is one seven trillion. One seven trillion. Yeah. Well, that's not even the total debt of Nigeria. Because I'm aware that there are some uh, promissory notes issued by the former government, the past, immediate past administration, that are not recorded in our debt profile. Those uh, promissory notes were issued to a lot of people, individuals, organizations, private and uh, semi-public, uh, that the government was owing and the previous government could not pay. The truth is that some of those debts were not as a result of the activities of the immediate past government. They were inherited debts. Mm -hmm. Some of them up to like 20 years, 30 years back. Some of them were also judgment debts. Judgment debts are people who took you to court and won their cases so that the court directed that uh, you must pay. So in the absence of uh, ability to pay, you have to reach an agreement with them to sort out the debt at a future date. So the government issued a lot of promise with us in the immediate past government. So I, mean, I think we are suffering from a lot of the wrong decisions that were taken in the past. Uh, that we are indebted is not an issue. What kind of indebtedness do we have is the issue. It we, when we sit down and analyze the debt profile of Nigeria, if those debts, let me say the majority of those debts were as a result of a uh, debts incurred for infrastructure purposes or developmental purposes. It's not really bad. But but that's what we've been told. The different um, debts that were pushed forward, uh, we've been told will be used for this, have been used for this and that, infrastructure development, and of course, the transparency aspect of it is what you know. I think you're talking about at the end of the day. Well, what you are told may not be the reality. I am aware that. Uh, there was a, or there is a promissory note issued by the CBN to a judgment debtor whose case dates back to 1990. 1990? Yes. Well, 34 years. And away, the promissory notes spills $100 million. And these judgment debts the, 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 occur, the event occurred in 1990. And to be specific, the occurred as a result of the 1990 Okaku. I'm aware. Is that developmental judge in uh, debt? Mm. Mm. I'm just giving you examples of. So, and that, and that, that's also part of the current. Um, it's not even. That we have. As far as I know, some of these debts were not added to this figure. And I'm talking of uh, Assad, June. 30 last year, I know they were not part of the current figure we are carrying about. You know, a lot of issues. The, there's the, 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 the DMO part, that's the debt management office. There's the CBM part. The DMO will tell you that when those uh, debts, those promissory notes were issued, they were not aware, they were not carried along. So there's no way they could add that to the public debt of Nigeria. I'm aware of all these things because I've tried to uh, uh, discount some of these uh, promissory notes for the meat holders. And uh, when you are discounting these promissory notes, you need the DMO to confirm the genuineness or the existence or the record of the promissory notes. So when you get deep into economic issues in Nigeria, financial issues in Nigeria, so that if you are not careful, you get lost along the line. And you just like shake your head and slack. A lot of people need to be in jail. That's yeah, the truth. Part of the deficit of the 2024 budget, we were told, you know, just last week that uh, the president is also uh, trying to get money, you know, borrow it through borrow borrowings. And of course, um, uh, we're asking ourselves questions as to whether it is needed. You know, the new sheriff that stays in town, is he going to do something different from what others have been doing with borrowings, uh, upon borrowings and upon borrowings? 
at this stage? Well, that I cannot sit down there to see. Well, if we go by history, what has happened in the past, <laughs> we know the difference, really. It was even stated in the budget. The revenue expectation was or is around 18 to 19 trillion. And the budget is 27 point something trillion. So it was stated, was stated in the budget that the, the shortfall, the metro borrowings and the recoveries made by organizations or public sector organizations like DFCC and the likes. So that he wants to borrow now is not really new. It was stated, well stated in the budget. The senators are aware, the lawmakers are aware that this, this shortfall will be made up from this source. But the question that you ask me is whether those borrowings will be channeled to developmental and infrastructural projects. If that is what the borrowing is for, that will be fine. But you see, what is on paper in Nigeria is always different from the reality. Every borrowing, the way the government wants to borrow, whether at the state or federal level, they will come around about to justify it. There's nobody going to tell you that uh, this borrowing is not going for developmental projects. Mm. But when you now drill down, you, you, you have what you call a train of where the funds or the funding is going to, you get disappointed. Uh, you are, we are always focusing on the federal budget. What about the state budget? Exactly. As of today, the totality of the budgets for states in Nigeria is 15.9 trillion. The federal government is 27.8 trillion or 27.7 trillion. The totality of all the state's budgets in Nigeria is 15.9 trillion, roughly 16 trillion. That should count for something. So the state with the highest budget in Nigeria is Lagos State, 2.27 trillion. And the state with the lowest budget is uh, Ikiti, 159, 160 trillion. Sorry, yeah, billion. Billion. Followed by Nasarawa. Nasarawa is around 199 billion. Ogun State is the top five of the highest. The Lagos, number one, Aqua Ibom, number two, Aqua is around 824, 840 something. Uh, Rivers, number three, that's around 804. Uh, Delta, number four, 720 something. Ogun, number five, 704. That is the trajectory of 2004, 2024 budgets in Nigeria. Now mm. ask yourself what are the developmental projects in this budget? And I can bet that the states will have more revenue than what they are budgeted for. Why? Because when they were doing the budgeting last year, the oil price was not as high as this, number one. Number two, from January to February, each of them have gotten a higher allocation than what they got in December, November, December. So the question now is that what are they doing with those funds? They are washed with funding now. This is that is why you cannot see a state governor criticizing the president. In those days, you see a state governor criticizing the federal government. The federal government. One of the state governors, either PDP, PC, or Labour Party, or whatever party you are, can look into the president's face and criticize it. Because he has open channel of revenue for them. Whether they are not using it judiciously or not is the issue. Now, are you saying that the state government should mind their businesses? Um, I mean, so that we can separate them from this um, uh, rising debt profile of Nigeria. They're saying uh, the, the, the debt profile of Nigeria does it include the, the debt profile of states? No, no. It's ju just that's not the federal government budget. Government. So it means that. Um, can the state governments close their eyes and um, mind their businesses and say, federal government, just stay there. We're doing our own here. Because we've just analyzed um, the, the um, budgets, 2024 budgets of different states, and how states are even likely to get more than what they are budgeted for, or what, how they are getting more for what they are budgeted for. Well, they can't, because the federal and the state government are like service trees. It's difficult to separate the federal from the state. Even if the state government needs to take facilities, especially if it's external, you need the, 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 the acknowledgement letter or a go-ahead letter or a letter of no, of, no, of no objection from the Minister of Finance, from the Minister of Finance. So that's the law. Because a lot of these loans or the payment will be tied to your federal allocation. So the Minister of Finance has got to issue a letter of no objection. So it is difficult for a state to, 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 stay, to, to, to stay apart from the federal government. Well, we also know that for, them, for any state to get a loan, you need the House of Assembly 
to pass a resolution authorizing you to take that loan. So it's difficult. What our states just need to do is to, to, to be more business-like. When you relate with a lot of states, uh, then you see the legal uh, regulatory obstacles put in front of investors, you, you now ask yourself, is it that our state want to discourage investors? Mm. You go to the Ministry of Commerce or the investment arm of a lot of states, and you, you maybe their PPP office, their regulatory office, a lot. And you see the, 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 the men of the guys there, you like, and you also see the, you look at the legal and regulatory obstacles put in front of the investors. You don't ask yourself. You come on board and say you're asking for investors or investment. Investments could be local, it could be foreign. But a lot of impediments are put in front of the investor. Let me give you an example. At the federal level, either to before the administration of President Bela Tinubu, we all know that the power sector in Nigeria is the, 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 the power sector is epileptic for want of a better word to use. Yet, there is a law, or then there was a law that did not allow private investment in the power sector. Mm. So what I would have said, we, everybody will come up and say, oh, we need to improve power supply, power generation, power distribution. But the law says that you can't come into that uh, line of business. Right. If you even generate, you have to transfer it to the national grid. So who we, who, which investor will want to do that? Okay. Thank God the law has been abrogated now. You see, these are some of the laws that, 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 that are like a, 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 a disinfect, incentive to a, a would-be investor. I, I, was at a, I, I was meeting the PPP office of a state, I think last week Monday, exactly this time last week Monday. And the vibes coming out from that state, you just know that this state is ready for business. The head of the PPP office was telling us that this government is ready to remove any impediments that can the, you know, stop or discourage a would-be investor. But you meet another uh, state, and to even get a meeting with them, it's like you, you are asking God or Allah to come down from heaven and talk to you. Mm -hmm. So the investor who has been in Nigeria for the past two weeks, Body, body, or hotel, everything. We go back to his country. So the state governments have to sit down, analyze their spending, their, their plan, their expectation. Let me also give you another example. A Kitty state government budget is 169 billion. That's, let's say, 170 billion. The Sarawak state government budget for year 2024 is 199 billion. Let's say, 200 billion. The state government budget is 704 billion. Lagos state government is 2.27 trillion. Meanwhile, Ekiti and Dasarawa has the same number of commissioners like Lagos. Mm. You know? They will have the number of permanent secretaries like Lagos. So the, the governments will be expanding the cost, the same cost. You carry the same cost like Lagos, like Ogo. It doesn't work that way. Okay. Your remedy is not the same, so you can't spend the same way. That's why I say the government, the state governments must tell, during their budget retreats, they must tell themselves the truth. So now you've given us um, what is likely, go is likely the accurate um, you know, debt profile of Nigeria, over 107 trillion naira, and of course, should the new government uh, not new again now, <laughs> they are also <laughs> engaging in all kinds of boring as well. Should they actually prosecute uh, or to probe some of the debts incurred by past administrations? In last, um, last week, we read how the ways and means, um, you know, death was also part of what they said they are going to uh, probe into uh, to find out what actually happened during uh, President uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari's administration. Uh, and of course, on that, the leadership of Godwill uh, and Mefili. I think the government is already doing that. Maybe at the micro, micro level. You know, there was an independent uh, uh, investigator appointed for the CBS. The ways and means 
that you mentioned is one of the worst uh, policy by the CBN. It's one of the worst policy by the CBN. The, 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 the present government rightly replaced it by the invest, uh, importer and exporter window. How can you say you are doing waste and this and lend the federal government up to $25 trillion? You are basically printing money. And people are saying there is inflation. Why would there not be inflation? It happened in Zimbabwe in the 70s and 80s. When the government of Robert Mugabe was printing a Zimbabwe around a dollar, what did they use there? Any government that starts printing money has lost its control of the economy. Mm. What did the ways are busy? A, it was a criminal activity because it was after they had done that that they not went to the Senate to get approval. Because the normal thing is that you must get approval. the Senate approval before. Of course, they quickly got the approval before the coming of this administration because they know that people will take them up. And it's, a, it's purely a criminal activity. You see, if the government decides to investigate them, it's fine. But it's another thing is that if you are not careful, you get bogged down with the investigation and you'll be able to move forward. Okay. As the government is doing that, the government should map its own plan, its own strategy of getting us out of this wood. And I, sometimes I wonder when you meet, maybe because some of us are in the private sector, uh, the way we think is purely different from the guys in the public sector. I acknowledge the fact that there are really extremely brilliant guys in the public sector, but there are very few. They are very few. Maybe I can name a lot of ministers who have outstanding career in the Sorry. private sector. The current minister of power, uh, de Adela Bosso, was an executive director in First Bank. He was First Bank chief finance officer. He's a chartered accountant. He, he, he moved from First Bank to be the deputy governor of CBN. You can't say that kind of a person is not smart, he's not intelligent. I just mentioned uh, Mr. Baradi Labu. There are so many of them there. But the issue is that I think well, maybe when they get there, I've not been there. You know, it's not only at the federal level, but at the state. Now, can we interrupt you to investigate how? It should take time because <laughs> what I'm doing now is even more than you know for me. <laughs> so it means I have to leave a lot of things. But that's not what we are saying. What we are saying here is that the government itself, probably the leader at the government level, at the president level, must have an idea on what he wants to do, so that you get the real when you get there. Mm. Okay, uh, Mr. Kune, as we're closing this gradually, um, uh, you've explained enough to us how um, this um, you know, debt actually accumulated. You know, I've, I've never really heard of uh, uh, judgment debt before. <laughs> you've explained to us, and you've also educated us on uh, the volume now, 107 trillion naira. But um, apart from what I also hear regularly is the fact that I mean, there's nothing wrong in actually, um, you know, um, borrowing. Big countries of the world also borrow, but use the money um, on, for developmental purposes. But what about the body language of those that we have in public office? You know, how they squander money and I mean, their expensive lifestyles and all of that. Don't you think those, those ones give, um, you know, wrong notions to people about um, what, um, um, debt are actually all about. They come out in the morning to tell Nigerians that uh, Nigerian debt has actually increased to 107 trillion naira. And then, um, you know, yesterday somebody saw you with a convoy, you are a new government chairman, and you drove around town with like a convoy of four, five, four, five, six cars, you know. And then um, the person begins to just oppose, you know. And, and you so begin to say, so we we should endure, the people and should endure. I mean, when, when somebody drives with a convoy of five cars, the question we should ask ourselves is who is foiling those cars? If he's driving in the convoy of four cars, maybe Chabo or Lukapa, he's the owner of those cars. If he's paying for, for the driver, the cost of foiling and maintenance and everything, we are fine with that. I remember when Governor Fashola was, when Baba Dinaraj Fashola was Governor of Lagos, most of the, he moved around Lagos in buses. In that bus, you will see him and his commissioners and special advisor. He saves time, he saves cost. Go and look at the typical convoy of a governor in Nigeria. You'll be shocked. I'm not placing anything on any governor. Look at the typical convoy of a governor in Nigeria. Maybe not less than 10 vehicles. 10 vehicles, 10 drivers, 10 uh, materials. In those vehicles, okay. you have two people in each of these. See, that's why I say the state governments, especially 
go sit down and agree on what they want. When you tell people to, to endure, there's a saying that says there's a limit to human endurance. They have been asking us to endure for the past 40 years. And I'm not a 40 year old man. So it means I will endure, endure till I die. It's all like you, uh, you know how to endure. You're enduring really well. Maybe it's camouflage. Maybe it's camouflage, but, 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 be, but beyond that. Like you are doing something. They say that a rich man is the means of poor people. It's exactly. a poor man to you. Yeah. It's a poor man to you. If you are a human being, you will enjoy seeing your fellow human beings suffering. Some people, what kills them is a. Uh, what $20,000 can sort out. Exactly. Okay, so we'll like, uh, FCA, we'll have to um, bring you back in the days ahead when uh, matters that have to do with um, the economy arise. Um, anytime we have you here, it's always a count of our analysis. We must thank you so much for coming to this program this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Celia, time to go. All right, thank you for being a part of the program today. We'll be back same time, same station next three. God willing, I'll keep watching the people's telly. Tomorrow or tomorrow.